solve this, I will go on later. I haven't solved the thing. Yay! So, hello. This is a YouTube channel, hopefully, <laughs> in which I program and I try to explain what I do. Um, in this particular series, I will learn along with yourself uh, a thing. In this particular case, I am learning ASCO and I'm doing so by reading the real world ASCO book and uh, I am implementing the binary parser of the PGM uh, thing, it's uh, chapter 10 and uh, I will do so while speaking and here it is already uh, I did not start from scratch but I will try to explain my process from scratch and uh, my setup is just a browser here I'm using Q browser and uh, Qt browser sorry this was because I don't even know how stack works <laughs> explain the basics of stack so that you can follow along and I also uh, have tabs in my browser now I only have real world ASCO so that's the only thing I'm going to read I have Vim here it is open inside of that folder which contains a stack project Oh, well, that's cool, I don't have MS. Oh, yeah, because I'm inside the JC, I don't have to. Okay, so uh, this is the stack project, which is called Real World ASCO Chapter 10. And uh, I also have, like, recording software here and an other console, which I use, like, when I need to do long things, but that's not important. Uh, so let's talk about ASCO or oh, other technical things. This series is not supposed to be a real like impediment on my <laughs> learning style, so I will edit this very few. Like I will edit this um, not that much. I will try to edit it live, but it will be very raw in its presentation. If it becomes like something, if it gains views or stuff like that, I will then maybe bump up my editing skills. So we are programming in ASCO. We are making a gray map parser. A gray map file is a image format file. I have one in the assets directory of my folder. And it is, of course, an all cat, and it is also a black and white picture because PGM stands for uh, portable gray map, and a gray map is, of course, a black and white picture. So we can view the file using Vim, which is just a text editor, and here it is. As you can see, it has a version specified the first line, second line has width and height. Third line is the maximal, maximum gray value, and uh, the rest of the file after a new line is just a byte string which contains in every byte it contains a number which goes from 0 to the maximum gray value specified, which is 255 in this instance of file, and uh, this value represents the amount of gray. So, like here we have, we have like zero blackness where the text is, the gray of the log cat has a little bit of black in it. Okay. Alright, so I, I will like a structure which will contain the parse, the parse the data, and I set up a skeleton to parse. So let's test the skeleton. Right, so I'm going to write the first PGM function. It 
it's going to accept string and it's going to return the claim format. So let's define this as undefined. Yeah. Of course I will need to accept it. Oh. And uh, so right now it should compile. Let's see. Okay, in the second argument of dollar, namely parse pgm, uh, put string parse pgm contents in the expression. Um, couldn't match type gray map with char. Expected type string actual type gray map. Oh, yeah, I guess I need, yeah because I I did put string, so I need to convert this to a string. I hoping this will work. Oh no, it's show. Yeah, it's a show function. Like the standard way to do these things. Like, oh, I don't have print commands. That's a pity. So we need to reload. And it doesn't have any errors this time. I do main. I get a call to undefined, but it works. If I only if I return this string undefined, we should see. But we need to reload, of course. Uh, it doesn't work. Oh yeah, it's not a gray map, of course. So let's return a gray map. So I, well, you can do this and uh, pass it as a tuple. Let's see, one, one, width of one, height of one, gray value of one, and contents of an empty list. I don't write to show. I think we will need to implement our own version. Okay, so it doesn't work. Um, oh, it only wants an int. Um, to be honest, I, I don't really know how structures work that much. So I guess I will need to. Um, let's see. I don't know if to edit this out or oh, well, not C's cross. I think it's called records uh, in the technical. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Okay, so I see it's called records. Um, so they are basically structures if you know C programming, but I forgot the syntax. Here it is. Um, yeah, they are like within other things, but I want to know to construct them. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if like real world has a chapter. Okay, so um, using type classes. So I will, I will, I guess I will see to this and then. Now here is data structures. Okay, I will not edit this out. Uh, association lists, I don't care. Let's see. Records. I only have one occurrence of that word. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's not what I was looking for. I think it is in the defining type. It should be. Bracket syntax, yay. Okay, so. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, still doesn't work because we don't need the things. Okay. So, yeah, in Haskell you have functions, you call functions by, by just calling them. Like in this, you know, you have this syntax and you can omit the parentheses and it will call the gray map function with these um, parameters. You need commas, it's just very clean. And uh, that's the constructor. Okay, and it prints it. Yeah, it works. Okay. 
can I do it on a single line? Let's reload. Let's do it again. Yeah. Okay, so I guess now we just need to implement it. Okay, so, um, okay, first of all, we will not read it as a byte, as a string. We will read it as a byte string. Yes, I, I showed you. I showed you that we will have the. If we look again at the image, it has a byte string component. So we, we, we don't want to interpret this as a literal string, but we do want to interpret these as ASCII, ASCII because they are ASCII, uh, like I mentioned. So we need like an hybrid thing, and the way to work on hybrid strings which contain a byte component and the UTF-8 component is to use a library which is built for that purpose and that library is uh, specified in the tutorial and I do not remember the specifics of it. So let's go see a code case study parsing the binary type of format. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah I tend to when I read books I tend to read them only when I need to. I read them like all, I read, I read all of this and I try to remember as much as I can and now I'm trying to reproduce it without reading it like again. <laughs> That's how I do it. So yeah, as you can see there's like this L dot everywhere and this is because he imported these things. Okay, so we need to import. So this is how you import. Uh, you can import qualifier, which just means that you can use the as thing and uh, that the, that byte string that lazy that car eight. So this is the library, and it just uses lazy strings because you know why not. <laughs> Also uses this. Okay, so this only parses byte strings as byte strings. It has like utility functions for reading bytes. This, on the other hand, is for reading byte strings as if they were valid UTF-8, which is going to be needed for this section. In this section, I'm just going to use you know the normal byte string processing functions. Okay, so. We now need to read a byte string. Uh, I guess we can just read the string and make it a byte string using the pack function. And uh, we will pack it using the um, as if it was a UTF-8. We will now we will unpack it, and it will now be a byte string put into content. So let's see if, uh, if it works. Stack GHCI, which loads the main module. So it does not work. Because the brackets do not match. Oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you don't know why I erased it. Um, one, one, one. So let's reload. Okay, so now I need to import this. And um, this is a nice opportunity to explain how I came to create this project. So what you do is, oh, what, what I mean is this. I don't know. So what you do is open the terminal window, go to the design location, go to stack, new, name of the project. I call the three award as for chapter 10 and then put a template. I put simple as my template. And um, it then builds a directory, which in my case is this, and it puts a bunch of files in the directory. The most important one is this file, because it has things that have to do with dependencies, you know, these. And um, 